our next upcoming class, sorry, excuse me, uh, that will be shown on September 20th at 1 p.m. Central Time. Please keep an eye out for this class as it will be posted on michaels.com within the next two weeks. And I'll also post in the chat section over there the ways that you can connect with Nikki so you can follow her and see when her next upcoming classes are coming. Uh, there's also an inspiration image that was done for this class. We can provide that link in the chat for you as well for those that have missed it. And upon completion of this class, you'll be sent a survey in your email. Please let us know what you thought about the class, how we did, and if there's any particular topics you'd like to see Nikki perform in the future. Uh, also, as stated before, the class is being recorded, and within 24 to 48 hours, you'll be able to find the replay of this class on michaels.com and the Michaels YouTube channel. Along with there, there'll also be the, out, the class outline with all the materials and instructions to complete this piece of art. Please feel free to follow along with Nikki or sit back and relax and enjoy the class. And with that, I'd like to pass it over to Nikki. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. I'm just looking at the chat. And there are so many people from like really close to home, which is amazing, all over the US, Canada, Ontario, so glad. So welcome. If you are joining me for the first time during this painting session, thank you. We're going to have a lot of fun. If you are returning, uh, welcome back. I was really excited to see all of your poppy paintings that you shared with me. So amazing job, everyone. And remember that as we go today, I'm going to try to go as slow as possible, keeping in mind that we have an hour together. Um, you can always pause and watch what I'm doing and then watch the replay. So if you're finding it a little bit difficult to follow along, don't worry, Michaels will post the replay. But again, I will go as slow as possible. Um, Tim will monitor the chat. So if you have questions as I go or want me to bring the painting up a little closer, just let us know in the chat and Tim will um, notify me, which is great. So if you're new to painting landscapes, um, one thing that I do when I approach landscape painting is I like to give you inspiration for what we'll paint so that you can start to observe parts of the painting that maybe you want to emulate. When we paint these landscapes, really we want to approach it with expressing a feeling of where that landscape brings us. And in this case, it's a seascape. And I'm hoping that as you're painting these, that maybe you're finding inspiration as you are going to, on your travels or maybe just going about on your daily walks. I was away about a week or so ago and we were near water. We're not near water where I live. So whenever we are, I'd love to take endless amount of photos and have inspiration. But what I like to notice are like how light reflects off the water and how there's contrasting in the waves. And I really do look for those things when I'm painting landscapes. So I want you to just practice um, just sharpening that observation skill a little bit as we get going. And maybe there's pieces that you're picking out that you that's speaking to you a little bit more. So again, as we approach this painting, I might even be inspired today as we go to paint it a little bit differently. I want you to know as artists, just take your artistic liberties, interpret the painting um, as you see it. Of course, take the tips that I'm going to be sharing with you today and really enjoy painting these landscapes that we work on um, with our watercolors, okay? So let's get going so that we can make sure we have a lot of time to paint together. Um, if you go ahead, Maria, and switch to my desk view, perfect. So again, if you need me to hold the piece up a little bit, just let me know. Um, and I'm going to start talking a little bit about what I have around me in terms of supplies. Okay, so here's our reference photo. I will keep it nearby once we get painting. And here is my actual painting of how I interpreted that piece. So again, you can see they're similar, but I still honed in on different aspects that spoke to me. Um, and I'm going to keep that close by as well as I have it on my iPad. So sometimes you can zoom in on your iPad a little bit easier, which makes it great. Okay, and there is my painting as well that I'm going to keep again close by because I'm going to try to emulate it as much as possible so that we can be a little bit consistent with um, how we're interpreting it. Now I know that Tim has all of our handles and all of our hashtags. If you want to take a screenshot, here is um, how you can tag us and the hashtags you can use. I, like I said again, love to see uh, what you're working on, how you interpret these paintings. So please do share it with me. Okay, first up, I have the Windsor & Newton Professional Watercolor Paper. It's 100% cotton. I'm actually gonna grab the pad, which I didn't have handy, but do have it handy, of course. Here's what it looks like. 
So it is 100% cotton. It is um, rough grain, so it has a really nice texture to it, and it holds a good amount of water. So if you are not using um, a professional cotton-based uh, paper, I suggest you do because you will notice that your paper will start to buckle, your colors may not be as vibrant, and you'll get a little frustrated with your uh, with the process. Okay, so go ahead and take your piece down. I cut mine down to a five by seven. And in order to paint something in an hour, I feel like if we work smaller, we'll be able to achieve that. So go ahead and tape your piece down. I just use, um, it's 3M for delicate surfaces tape. Michaels has a great assortment of tapes that you can look at on in their stores and online. So grab whatever you can, what you have handy and near you. And I think I'm actually going to move my iPad so that you can see better. Ooh, that's awesome. Okay, glad that I noticed that. So in terms of colors, these are the colors that we'll be using. And I think what I'll do is even dispense them as we go. So cerulean blue red shade. I really love these colors for the sky. And again, working with Windsor Newton professional watercolors, I know that I'm going to have a really nice pigment payoff. It'll be strong pigment. The finish of the piece will be really nice and bold and my paintings are gonna last. So those are really important if you are starting to work on pieces that maybe you're framing or starting to gift. Um, you want to make sure that you are using these professional quality Windsor Newton, um, especially now if you've been painting with me for a while, you um, are at that level where you should be working with tools and supplies that are a little bit better quality, okay? So Windsor Newton Professional. That is uh, Payne's Gray and the Cerulean Blue. Payne's Gray we'll use for a bit of shadowing. Prussian Blue is a color I love to use for both sky and water. I did dispense, I had some Payne's Gray left it. I didn't wanna clean up my palette entirely. So Prussian Blue is a really great color that um, you can use for sky or water. And I love that it has just a little bit of a red undertone to it, which I think is great for when you're blending as well. Okay. Burnt Umber in the Windsor Newton Professional line is also a color that I love to use for sand and for some shadowing. We'll use that in the sky as well. And if investing in professional quality paints like this is a little bit more challenging for some of you, I understand completely. But if you've been painting with me these last few sessions, you'll see that I use the same colors um, again and again, and maybe just add in a few extra tubes here and there. So they last forever and you'll um, again, enjoy the process of painting a little bit more. So that was Burnt Umber and Windsor Yellow that I have in my palette here, okay? So I'm gonna put my paints to the side, get my palette ready and it's a ceramic palette. Again, Michaels has some really great options for ceramic. I prefer them over the plastic just because of the way that I can blend the color and um, mix them. It just offers a little bit more slip. Okay, so here's a new product that we haven't used yet, and it's Windsor Newton's ink. I love using this ink color or this ink um, product in order to create some really beautiful highlights. We'll use them in the clouds a little bit, which we haven't done before, and also create the highlights for the waves and the water. If you don't have the ink, I'd recommend a white gouache. Gouache um, is also really nice and opaque, and Windsor Newton carries a great line of gouache paints if you haven't tried them yet. So we'll put that aside for now and we'll pick that up just in a little bit towards the end. Okay, number 12 and a number two synthetic um, professional brush. Again, the quality of the hairs are really important. So if you're finding you're having a hard time blending or even lifting off your paints, I'd recommend taking a look at the brushes that you're using. They hold a lot of water and a lot of product. So you don't have to um, work your paper as much and again, releases the paint onto the paper really beautifully. So we'll use the 12 primarily for most of the painting today and the number two for a lot of our fine work, okay? Of course, off camera, I have my jars of water, which I don't think you need to see. So I'm just making sure that we can see everything. I have some kitchen towel to blot off my brushes with, and then also just a few tissues because we will work on the clouds with them as well. Okay, so before we get started, are there any questions about supplies that anyone has? Tim will let me know if so. And as you're popping in the questions, 
I'm going to start this piece by taping our horizon line. So again, if we look at our um, inspirational piece, I actually have cropped it a little bit differently than the original photo. We have three quarters, I'd say, of the sky showing and a third or a quarter of the water. I kind of like dividing this piece in half. I feel like there's a really nice balance. And then our birds that will paint to the end can be in that focal point, okay? So we're going to go ahead and take some of our tape. So instead of penciling, using a pencil light, oh, it pull off one that was long enough. We're going to use tape to create that really nice crisp line. So you decide where you want your horizon line to sit. I'm going to go about halfway. because I really want there to be lots of room to express the sky as well as the water. Okay, so using your number 12 brush, and I'm going to turn my palette so you can see the cerulean blue. What we want to do is, again, use a lot of water to wet that top layer of our cotton paper, because we know it can handle it. And then we can get going on our sky. Okay, so you should be able to just see a sheen of water doesn't have to be a lot so there make sure there isn't a wall or a bubble you just want to push that water into the paper so that your paint has enough room to slip and move around perfect so now adding a bit of water to my cerulean blue as I'm starting to put down the paint what I'm noticing is that there's a really beautiful yellow reflection from the sun on the clouds. So I'm going to start flooding from the top and just using your number 12 brush, going ahead and starting to build in that sky. So that's the first layer. I'm going into the corners and making sure that my sky is really nice and concentrated on the top corners. It's just something that I love to do to really draw that eye upwards to show our big sky. Okay. And one thing about painting skies is you can be really free. I'll just add a little bit more <clears throat> with expressing your clouds. I love big fluffy clouds. Um, so for me, I like to express big fluffy clouds in my painting. Um, you don't have to, again, you can choose as you wish, but I'm just adding a little bit more water and blending the bottom so that it gets a little bit lighter towards my horizon line because I do want to put in a little bit of that yellow, which we're going to do just in a second. So wiping off the brush, I'm going to grab my tissue and crumpling it up. I'll be looking at my inspiration and even the painting that I worked on, I'm just dabbing. So you have to work a little bit more quickly while your piece is wet but I'm just looking at my photo for inspiration, deciding where I want those clouds to sit and how I want those clouds to be expressed. And then you can always go back with a little bit more of that cerulean blue and even just draw in a little bit of contour or a darker spot here in our clouds in the sky. And you can see here, I've got a little bit heavier. That's okay, because as we work wet on wet, we have control. And again, especially with really good quality paints, like these Windsor Newton professional paints, you will be able to lift, add nice bold strokes. And then I'm just using a dry or a clean brush and moving that paint around a little bit. Perfect. So now we want to emulate that really pretty yellow reflection in the cloud. So I'm going to just spin my palette a little bit. And the reason why I went a little bit lighter um, at the bottom there is because I don't want the yellow and blue to mix. If they do, then it will turn green. So I have water on my paper and just taking a bit of that yellow and I'll even draw it up under the clouds here. I like creating that reflection and even expressing it a little bit more. So that's in contrast with the blue, but again, you decide what you like to do. And working wet on wet, we can blend out that sky 
and really have fun with that reflection. So we'll make sure to take a cl another clean tissue. And again, just going into different parts and just dabbing. So where we applied that yellow, just to soften it a slight bit. And again, to make it look like there are nice reflections of clouds there. So it's a little bit of going back and forth. And that's the beauty of working wet on wet. You have time, I'm going to go in with a little bit more yellow. You have time to work your um, piece and add a little bit more in spaces as you go. And just deciding where I want a little bit more of that yellow reflection. So it does look strong, but it'll dry a little bit lighter as watercolor does. And I'm just using a dry brush and even just wiping off the excess to create those lines that I see here in the piece. And I also need to decide at this point where my sun's going to sit. So I imagine it reflecting sort of in this area here. And I can even see there's some yellow above the sun and some more clouds. So while it's still wet, I can just take away. So I'm just wiping, making sure my brush is nice and dry. So again, using a professional synthetic brush like this, you can wipe away and lift really easily. Oh, it's starting to come along, okay. So again, I'm just going to work different areas. This cloud looks a little bit oddly shaped to me and that's okay. I can just go back and remove a bit. And then before we move on, I think what I'll even do is take a little bit more of this cerulean blue and just pop it in a bit more. I like that contrast again, just in the top and maybe even in through here a tiny bit. And you can decide when you're done. If you feel like you want to add a little bit more to your piece, please feel free. We will go back and add a little bit more of our burnt umber to it. And again, just working it back and forth. Okay, how's everyone doing? I'm going to go ahead and remove the tape line. So we can get to our next step, but look at that beautiful crisp horizon line that taping your horizon offers you. So again, that's something new that we've done as well. Perfect, okay. So now what we want to do is start building out our shoreline and water. So for my original piece, I didn't draw out that shoreline. I'm gonna show you so that you have it as an example. I actually just let the line happen organically, which sometimes is better because it will um, feel a little bit more natural. So if you want to go ahead and draw out your um, shoreline, please feel free. Maybe I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like. So I'm just going to follow something that looks like there's movement and it's organic. So then that way, again, there's movement in the piece when it's finished, okay? So if you don't feel like you can just paint um, a shoreline freehand, go ahead and draw it out. Mine, I actually see there's a little bit too much of a swoop here. So I'm just going to straighten it out. Grab my eraser. And let's remove a little bit of it. Okay, that's better. So now what we want to do is start to paint in the water of our sea. And in order to do that, oh, I picked up Payne's Great accident. I'm going to grab the Prussian blue, make sure that I have a nice, Nice puddle. So you can see again how opaque that color is. Beautiful. It always gets me excited when I start mixing up a nice, beautiful, deep puddle of watercolor like that. Okay. So now again, same step. We're going to go ahead and just, just hitting the um, horizon line ever so slightly and drawing that water down. We're going to start to prep our paper to make sure that we have a nice wet surface that we can paint wet on wet with. And just to your line, whatever line you're creating for your beach. Okay, nice and wet. Go ahead and pick up just a slight amount of um, the Prussian blue. So you can see how really nice and dark that is. Just at the horizon line, right in there. And if it bleeds into the yellow, don't worry about it. Let it bleed, let the watercolor do its thing. 
But what I am going to do is start to focus on creating that really nice sort of sun reflection on the water. So again, if you start observing images or even as you're traveling, if you have the opportunity to be near water, you'll start to see how the light reflects and catches. So I'm just removing a little bit of that pigment using my brush. If your brush isn't doing it, then go ahead and use a tissue so you can remove that highlight right there. So that's going to remind you that that's where your sun will reflect the most. And then you can start drawing in that water, making sure you give yourself opportunity to skip areas because that will start to emulate our um, waves. Okay, so now I'll work from the outside sections inwards and just using the tip of my brush. Don't need a lot of paint, so just applying the paint on the very tip. I'm just going in. Oh, look at how beautiful and bold that is. Just going in from the outer edge coming inwards because again, we want to keep this area nice and clear for our sun reflection. And again, if it feels like, oh, maybe it's too heavy, go ahead, wash off your brush. While your paint is still wet, I'm dabbing off a slight bit, and then you can blend it. Okay. And then drawing it down to your shoreline here. Okay, so this is our first layer of painting the water. And I'll even continue it down to my shoreline here. And there can be some movement, so don't feel like you have to keep everything in a solid line. Go ahead and blend that out. Because as the waves move, they're creating shadows and highlights too. Okay, so this is where you can take a moment. I can see that my um, blue has blended up into the yellow, so that's okay. I'm just taking a clean brush that's dry and I'm pulling it back a little bit. So again, when you're painting wet on wet, you're in control still and you can kind of manipulate the watercolor so that it moves where you want it to go. So there is our first, I'm just looking at my reference here and just drawing in these areas there. So there's our first layer of our water starting to look really good. Just blending a little bit, taking a moment. Perfect. So now what we can even do at this point is let's pick up a smaller brush. So I've got my number two here, making sure I get it nice and wet. And I'll pick up a little bit more of that Prussian blue. And I'm pulling a little bit off. And I think what I'm going to do is just accentuate. If I'm looking at the image, there isn't a strong horizon line and that's okay, but I'm just going to accentuate where I want that wave to go. So if you're looking at your reference as well, there are some bigger waves at the shoreline. So smaller ones towards the back and I'm just going in short strokes throughout and just emulating that really nice sort of wave. And because my page is still wet too, it's blending really nicely and moving, which is fantastic, which is what we want. And then I can take a little bit more even, and just in the shoreline here, there's again a bit of a, a shadow from that wave. So you can go ahead and start to build up your beach and shoreline too. Okay, and again, using your reference and back here, as the waves are further away, they'll be smaller. So these are a little bit um, more detail, like finer detail. So you may not be able to see them as easily on camera. But just so you know, as you're painting water and waves, make sure that you paint smaller ones that are off in the distance and then larger ones that are closer um, to the shore. You can see them start to come to life already. And just using your brush, you can soften those shadows if you choose, which is really nice. And even going across the front of this where the sun will be shining too. Just get starting to come together. So if I look at my reference here, again, I'm seeing there's some um, of a yellow reflection coming from the sun. So let's go ahead and do that now because your page should be just a little bit damp. 
but not totally wet. So we don't want the yellow to blend too much, but we do want the opportunity for it to be nice and soft as it's blended. So I'm adding quite a bit of water on my brush, not as much water in my uh, paint mix. And I'm actually gonna make sure that I have a little bit less of that yellow because it is quite strong and I don't want it to turn my water green, but I'm just going in ever so slightly. So you can see how it just adds that hint of yellow to the water, which again, accentuates that glow from the sun. And I can even go up here now that my sky is a little bit dry and accentuate that too. And that's when you start building a bit more contrast in your watercolor as we build layers. And sometimes it's really subtle, but it will make a difference in your finished piece. Okay, how's everyone doing? Let us know in the chat. There we go. I've so seen any questions in there, so I think we're, we're pretty good. We're good. Anybody, um, anybody that does have questions, please you know, go to the chat. I'll try to answer them as, as best I can. If not, I could uh, forward over to Nikki if it's something that she's doing on the screen to address. I think we're yeah. good. Okay, so at this point, Again, your page should be a little bit damp. So if it feels cold to the touch, you know that there's still water on it, which is great. We don't want it to be soaking wet. We want to start bringing in a little bit of this burnt umber. So I'm going to use my bigger brush to mix it up. because My bigger brush, number 12, holds a lot of water. So you can see right away, just adding a tiny bit of water, that pigment, super pigmented um, paint is just waking up. Love it. So dry paper, I'm gonna turn my body a little bit. I'm using the tip of my brush because I want the shoreline. I'm going to show you here so you understand what we're doing. I want that shoreline to be a little bit darker and we're gonna add some spots that are lighter too. I'm going to use the tip of my brush to lay down that color first, just following the shoreline and the beach and drawing that in. So I can even see I've drawn it differently and painting it differently than my original piece. And that's okay. Uh, you want to just go with how you're feeling in this moment on this day and let your artistic expression guide you. So I just added a bit of water because what I want to do is pull back a little bit of that pigment. So I create a bit of highlight on the beach here where the sun will reflect different um, parts of the beach. And just again, this outer area here, I want that to be really nice and highlighted, right? And then I can take that same brush, just loading the very tip with a bit of that burnt umber, maybe a little bit more. And I can go right underneath where we paint and you can see it's already starting to come to life. So we're adding that contrast and value and shade to make it look like that base of the water is rolling over and has a little bit of a shadow. Perfect. And then again, the contrast with the highlight is great. So here's my sun reflecting. So I just want to make sure that I pull out a little bit of that reflection there to emulate that. And I don't know about you're... everybody else, but I wish I was on that beach right now with the temperatures <laughs> that are outside. <laughs> cool it off with your feet in the water there. <laughs> It's a hot and, I, and I'm not today. talking about just in the United States. We have a lot of people that I've seen online saying hello, and they're from all around from North America and outside of North America. And I know there's heat wave going on everywhere right now. So yeah, hopefully this is making everybody feel cool while they're, while they're doing this and watching it. We need like one of those fans that shoot out um, water, Tim, so that we can feel the breeze. <laughs> it's a hot one in Toronto too. Um, I think we're at 34. Oh, look at that come together. So I'm using the small brush and picking up again a little bit more of that burnt umber and just going in. And you don't have to do it everywhere, but just in parts where you want to create a little bit more of that shadow, go ahead and do so. Okay. We're going to watercolor paper. I'm using the Windsor Newton Professional. Sorry, I just got caught by the chats here. So it's the Windsor Newton Professional 100% cotton, 140 pound. Tim will correct me if I'm incorrect there. 
You are correct. And I dropped the link in there for everybody because that paper is only available online and on michaels.com. You can't go to the Michaels store to buy that. So if you want to buy it from Michaels, it has to go through their website. Perfect. You can shop online as you're painting. Okay, so I'm taking the number two brush again, really loading it up, and I just want to create a little bit more interest. It's almost like ripples um, in the sand here, where again, the tide would come in and out. It's very subtle, but I feel like when you can do um, little detailed expressions like this, it really makes a difference when your piece is dry. So I'm just wiping off, pulling away a little bit of that color, creating some highlights there and making sure it's not flat, okay? So we're gonna move away from the beach, let that dry. And then what we're going to do is go back into the sky. So if I look at my image, um, the color isn't that lemon yellow necessarily. I really like using the lemon yellow to express the sun because from a distance, I feel like it's really great, um, but it is more of, um, a burnt orange kind of tone. And what we're going to do is use our burnt umber to express that. So again, it doesn't have to be identical to the photo. Use colors that you love and um, emulate them as you wish, okay? So now I'm going to go ahead and start to paint in these darker, oh, I have a little bit of a water just as I was wiping off my brush um, and start to paint in some of these more expressive clouds that are being reflected by the sun. So I'm going to keep that sunspot really nice and bright and just bringing in some of that nice burnt umber. And so this is dry paper, but our um, brush stroke is wet. So I can go ahead and wet my brush and just start to define or diffuse it a slight bit. So if you feel like you have too much pigment to start with, that's okay, you can always pull back a little bit but I am just using a wet brush to do that. So again, looking at my inspiration, there's really nice, that burnt umber kind of glow that you can use. And if you don't have burnt umber, maybe um, a yellow ochre would work really well. You can mix a tiny, tiny bit of red to your yellow. I don't want it to be too orangey, but I really like that kind of burnt glow. So again, I'm just looking back and forth, noticing where there's a little bit of that beautiful orange hue. And again, don't worry if you got a little bit heavy, you can go back to it in a second to wash it away. And see how that diffuses it a little bit, but the glow of the yellow still really, again, tells the eye that the sun is there, it is setting and creating that really nice highlight. So just with a, a damp, clean brush, I can go ahead and blend that out a little bit. Okay, so I'm looking at my computer screen. Sometimes taking photographs of your piece will help um, flatten the image a little bit and you can see where you need to add a bit of detail. But I quite like that. I can even add a little bit of yellow glow to the underside of this cloud here it's close enough to the sun that it will reflect. Okay, and again, if you feel like it's too strong, clean off your brush and you can even take your larger brush and make sure it is definitely clean and you can just soften it a little bit. But again, doing things like this when the piece is dry, it feels so good because you can see the detail. Okay, awesome. So we're going to let the sky dry a little bit before we paint in our seagulls. And let's go ahead and finish our um, water and beach scene. So I want to put in a little bit more definition, especially um, at the beach, just at the edge there before we put in the waves. So I'm going to go in with a little bit more of that burnt umber and my number two brush. And because it'll be more dry, the paper that is, I can go ahead and pop in just a little bit more contrast. So I'm almost going in where the water is um, curved a little bit. So where it's pulling back a slight bit so that the part that's coming forward is defined as well. So just going in, maybe we'll go in here. Remember, this is where our sun is reflecting. So I'll leave that nice and clear and just define this area and maybe even in the corner here. 
because it is tapering off to our tape line, we can go ahead and define that. And wiping off my brush, it's very, very faint, but in the photo, you can see that there are, again, those, the movement in the beach where the tide comes in and out. Again, a really nice way to create some definition and detail when your piece is dry. Just in here a bit more too. Fantastic. Okay, so let's go ahead and paint in a few more of the um, waves and the ripples, grabbing some of my Prussian blue. Perfect. And we'll even grab some Payne's gray after that. I'm looking at my inspiration and my piece that I've painted, and I'm just going to go in and it's almost working in um, upside down V. So think of little mountains. That's the direction that you want to go with your waves and start to emulate a few. Don't worry about painting in every single wave because it'll, it'll be too much. But what you can do is start to paint in just the underside of the larger waves that are cresting and are closer to the shore in creating that definition. Maybe we'll bring one here because I feel like I can use one and I'll even bring in that definition there. And then as it goes out further, you want to make sure that you create smaller. So again, it's a little bit more detailed, but just smaller lines and you can even just go horizontally. And if you express it so that there is just very slight um, dashes like that, taking a clean brush, again, you can fade it out and let it skip. Oh, I just had a lot of water fall from my brush. That's okay. Clean it off or wipe it off. And that starts to bring in again, a little bit of definition to our water. So it's like putting in guidelines with those strokes. Oh, I really like how that's starting to look in the back here. So I'm constantly re-wetting my brush and just dabbing off a slight bit so that I can make sure I have control with how much water I am putting back on my piece as I'm blending out these little waves at the front here. And you can even grab some of that cerulean blue that we first started with. If you wanted to bring in again, a little bit of definition without going really heavy with the Prussian blue. And because Prussian blue is so um, pigmented, you can see how pigmented that puddle is versus this one, just add a bit more water. So if you don't have that cerulean blue, add water to your Prussian blue. So again, just looking at the waves here on my inspiration piece to start bringing that definition to the piece there. Again, I'll use a petal that has a little less water and going into the center. Just because we don't want it to be completely plain where that um, sun is coming into the water. We do want to add some personality there too. Okay, so now can't forget the other side. And here we can even handle it a, a little bit differently. So maybe these waves are a little bit larger and these are further back. So you want to make them a little bit smaller. Just want to in here add a little bit more. So just wet strokes. And creating some interest. So I know we're going to paint it a big wave here. So I almost want there to be one coming in behind it cresting as well. So when we start to bring in that white, it'll really make it come to life. So it's painting in the shadow of that wave first before we bring in the white. Okay. So taking a moment, looking pretty good. I almost feel like I just want a little bit more wave and contrast in the water here so I can start to bring it in a little bit more. And then I think a tiny bit of Payne's Gray. So if you haven't worked with Payne's Gray, again, it's another one of my favorite colors. Look at how beautifully pigmented that petal is. If I put a little bit 
on a clean part of my palette and add water. So see how diluted you can get it as well. Paints gray is one of my favorite colors. If you've taken watercolors made simple with me, you know that. <laughs> Hands up if Paints gray is one of your favorite too. Um, so I now am thinking, let's put in a little bit of Paints gray underneath these um, shadows again, where the waves are just hitting the shoreline because that contrast really will make your painting start to pop. And we're gonna use Payne's Gray for the seagulls too. So just a little bit in there. And I want to even accentuate these waves here. And we're almost ready to put in the white, which is so exciting. Okay, and just even in here, we can add a little bit of that Payne's Gray. And you decide, again, the horizon in the photo is a lot lighter, but I really like a darker horizon. I'm just letting that Payne's Gray hit a little bit underneath where we put in that Prussian blue. And it looks really nice. Like there's a lot of movement in the water, which is really nice. Okay, looking at this part here, I think I'm going to scrub a little bit. So again, working with 100% cotton paper. If you have heavy parts, you can use a clean, damp brush just to scrub away a slight bit, which is great. Okay, perfect. How are we doing for time? Ooh, we're getting close and we're almost done. That's amazing. Now, I'm at the point where I'm ready to paint our seagulls. I'm just wanting to make sure that the sky is really nice and dry, but let's go ahead and use our white. We're going to define the clouds a little bit and also start to bring in the, um, the waves crashing. So again, if you don't have the Windsor Noon ink, I recommend you try it. It's beautiful to work with. I just had to move it aside so that I wouldn't get um, some of the drippings on my piece. Uh, it's beautiful to work with. I just go right into the jar. You can pour some into a little plate or your palette. And sometimes I even just use the lid. There's always just enough, I feel like, on the lid of the jar as well. So what we want to do, and maybe what I'll do is I'll have my um, inspiration piece there, is I just want to add a little bit of white and bring in some beautiful crashing waves on top of where we highlighted. So this is going to show that there is movement again at the shoreline and I'm just dabbing. So using my number two and maybe stop painting for a second if you want to sort of see the process, but I'm just following wherever the shoreline kind of feels like um, the water will be touching the beach and even going on top of any areas that maybe are a little bit darker. So I'm highlighting the tops of these waves as well. And then you can even take that white, I'll go ahead and use the cap and start to bring in a little bit more of that white into where the sun is reflecting. Okay, so if you took a moment to take a break, go ahead and start adding your white. I'm just adding a bit of water to my brush, picking up a little bit more. And we can start to let it just skip. Let your brush skip across that page and let your white bring in some highlights. And again, at this point, if you feel like maybe your horizon line got a little bit dark, go ahead and lighten it up using the white. And if your brush is wet, then it will lighten, just as I'm talking and looking at my piece, it will um, dilute the ink a slight bit, which is nice. So it'll become a little bit more transparent. It's interesting to see all of the movement that I painted today versus my um, initial piece, which I really love. Again, when we were away, I just observed the water coming into the shoreline and how the sun reflected it. Knowing that I was going to paint this piece with you, I really wanted to understand how the light caught the waves. So maybe after you've painted this and you're near the water, you can take a minute before you take photos, of course, take a minute to really observe how the light reflects, which is really nice. So just going into the shore where it would bubble and even feel free to bring in some of that white maybe onto the beach to create some highlights there. And maybe, oh, let's flick a little bit too. So just using that white, I can see in here, I need to add a little bit of movement here. 
And what you could even do is take a little bit of that white on your brush. A damp brush will probably work better. And let the drips, I'm just tapping on my finger, let the drips hit the paper to again, make it look like water. I'll do that again, but make sure my brush is nice and wet. Take a good amount of that. You can see how much I have on my brush. And just letting the drips, because it almost, again, emulates that foam. And then you can stipple. Let's go ahead and bring that out there too. And when do you know that you're done? Whenever you feel like you've expressed that wave or that highlight um, enough. So that's a question I get asked a lot is, how do you know when you're done? Sometimes I say I'm done and then I go back and I, and I adjust some more. So it really, really depends. Personal, I guess. Okay, so I'm taking a bit of that white and again, looking at my piece, where do I want to add a little bit more highlight to my clouds? I can bring back a little bit of that white. And because this ink um, is a little bit more opaque, it will again, start to bring your clouds, a bit of brightness to your clouds and define them a little bit more. And I'm even looking from the sun. So if we work out from this nice glow outwards, I can start to define those clouds a little bit too. So it's a process and the more um, of these details that you add, I feel like the more interest you'll be able to bring to your landscape and especially from afar, because these are really great to observe at a distance when we create so much contrast in the values there. Okay, how are we for time? Oh, good, we're doing great. I hope that has been a little bit better paced for you. So I'm going to close my jar, so make sure because Accidents happen easy. I'm gonna close that to make sure I don't spill it. And now let's go ahead, I'm gonna make sure that my sky is dry. Let's add in our seagulls. And what I'll do is I'll actually keep my inspiration piece closer. Let's do a little bit of this so you can see my birds. There we go. Is that better? Everyone can see my birds a little bit. Maybe I'll even tuck it in. I have this piece taped to my desk, but I want you to see the shape of the seagulls because they really happen quickly and it doesn't have to be um, complicated. Perfect. Okay. So using your number two brush and your Payne's gray, you decide how big you want your seagulls to be. The larger they are, the closer to the observer they are. So the closer to the camera, the smaller they are, um, the further away they'll seem. You can even make the two birds that are in flight with their wings out, maybe a little bit smaller and have this guy bigger. It's totally up to you. If you want to draw in your seagulls first, feel free, but maybe what I'll suggest that you do is watch this step first, um, if you can't follow along as easily, and then you can see how I paint them in, okay? So I'm getting my number two brush, looking for my Payne's Gray, and here is the very watered down Payne's Gray, so maybe we'll go ahead and use that first, because I'm using Payne's Gray watered down to emulate the lighter part of the seagull, as well, um, I'll add a little bit more of the concentrated Payne's Gray to bring in some of that definition and detail. So I want my brush to be wet, but not soaking wet. So I'll go ahead and dab it off. And let's start with this guy. So I always work left to right, so my hand doesn't end up in the bird. <laughs> so I'm going to actually start with his wing and it kind of comes up to a point and then it's a little bit thicker where it meets the body. So again, it's very light, but I'll go over it so you can see. And then the body comes up. <clears throat> Let me take some water, I'm losing my voice. So you can see the shape of his body, hopefully. <clears throat> Will it help if I get closer? Let me go get closer. Oh, there we go. Perfect. So there's his body and his little beak. And then his back wing also comes up this way. So again, you can draw this in with your pencil if you like, um, or just be free, whatever happens, happens, and just let sort of the birds come to life. So I want to make sure that I don't paint one that's right in my sunspot there. So I'll move this one up a slight bit 
and I will paint him coming down and maybe even a bit smaller. So there's his first wing. I'll even paint in the back wing, which, which is a little bit shorter because he's in flight and that's behind him. And there's the body a slight bit. So now that I've got a bit of paint, I can go back to this guy and define him. And again, these are um, very undetailed. So because they are a little bit more expressive, you get the idea that they're seagulls, but they don't have to be extremely detailed. So now that I have my outline, I can go back in and paint that second seagull. And the third one is, he's actually my favorite. I love the position of his wings. So maybe we'll paint him um, a little bit lower. So I'm looking at, again, just composition of where they are. I'll start with the top of his wing and bring it down. And my, I have a little bit too much pigment on my brush for this wing because I want it to be nice and light, but that's okay. I can wipe off my brush, reload him, and then the body just connects just like that. Again, giving him a little bit of a belly and there's the tip of his beak. Okay, so now that we have our birds painted out like we do, oh, I can even go in with a bit of white after as well. I didn't even think of that till now. I'm going to go back in with a little bit of that concentrated Payne's Gray. So I'm picking up really nice bold amount of Payne's Gray. I'll dab it off on my tissues. I want you to see how much is coming off. So quite a bit is coming off. And now I can start to really draw in where the tips of the wings are a little bit darker. And because my brush stroke is still wet, so the initial um, stroke of these birds, it will start to fade and feather a little bit. It's because it's wet on wet, which I love. So again, it doesn't have to be highly detailed. Take a little bit more of that Payne's Gray, dab it off. And this guy here, I'm just going back and forth to draw in his the tip of his wing. And there's the tip of the bird there. Okay, so I'm going to use some white. I didn't think of this um, when I was painting the original, but I'm actually going to use some white to create contrast. So I feel like I had a little bit more water on my brush than when I started, when I painted this one initially. So here, let me show you the white. There we go. So let's see what happens. If I want to go ahead and define a little bit, I can just adding straight from the jar some of this white here. Again, just watching to bring in that bird. And then that way it doesn't um, blend into the sky as much. And as the ink starts to dry, you'll notice that it really gets absorbed nicely into the paper. So it doesn't sit on top of the paper, which I love. It sits or it actually gets absorbed into the paper, which is really nice. Okay, so there's my white contrast. One more step on these guys. I'm going to move this. I won't close it, but I'll move it out of the way. So again, picking up that really nice concentrated Payne's Gray, dabbing off a little bit. And I just want to make sure that I go in and even do the beak a slight bit, the tips of the wings, the beak, and then this one here. Good, and one more, just again for that nice contrast. So my white's still a little bit wet, but we'll just go over it again. Okay, so my white on this one is a little bit wet, so when it dries in a minute or so, I'm gonna go back to it. So looking at the piece now, is there, are there any areas that I want to create a little bit more depth before we do the amazing tape pull? I think I'm just going to go in and touch that shoreline because I feel like that's a focal point. Letting it skip, but creating that definition there. And even slightly in this wave here, I think will be really exciting. So again, I'm creating that really nice contrast there. Okay, so taking that extra minute to let this bird dry, did the trick, so there we go. I brought in that detail in his wing. And again, just at the beak there too. Okay, let me pull back a little bit. How's everyone doing? 
How are we for time? Yay, we're doing awesome. Hopefully that was a little bit easier to follow. Okay, so I'm gonna close my ink jar just so I don't have any accidents. So at this point, you can decide if you want to add a little bit more um, highlight to your piece if you wanted to maybe let it dry completely and then add a bit more definition to your birds, feel free. But I'm pretty pleased with how it looks. And I always feel like once we do the tape pull, it really all comes together uh, beautifully. So again, I like to pull back a bit. So these landscapes are really um, amazing to see from a distance. So if you're feeling like you need to maybe take a break from the piece and you don't know how much more contrast to put in, take a photo, hold it away from you so that you can observe it from a distance. And if it still feels like there's a lot of contrast with your highlights in comparison to your um, darker areas, then, then you know that you're on the right track. Okay, so, and if you have to hop off, thank you for joining, but I want to share with you what we're going to paint next. So hopefully you can stay with me for a little bit. Okay. As you're peeling it off, Nikki, I'm going to let everybody know if you open your chat box and those of you who want to get the information that was on there uh, in your chat box, you see the three little dots on the lower right hand side, double click on that and you can save the chat from the class because there's a lot of good information that was going back and forth between myself and other people in the class and just everyone else actually helping each other out. So if you want to save it, chat box, three dots, hit save. Amazing. Okay. So there is our finished seascape. Again, you can add detail, you can go back to it. Um, maybe tomorrow when everything's dry, you want to add a bit more of that white, play around with the white ink. It is really fun to work with. Um, and I will share with you what we're painting in September. So we aren't painting together in August, but in September, um, Tim actually chose this one. I really love it. It's a beautiful wheat field um, that we'll paint and have some fun with. And really, again, look at how really beautiful and bright that field is. So good. Okay. So thank you for joining me. Um, if you want to maybe flip cameras, Maria, I can say goodbye to everyone. Thank you for painting along with me. I hope you had so much fun. As always, thank you to Windsor Newton and Michaels for creating this opportunity for us to spend some time together virtually and paint and really explore these beautiful watercolor paints and tools and supplies. And please do follow me at lifeidesign.com. I saw all of your poppy posts um, last month, which is amazing. If you tag me on Instagram, I can reshare, which I love to do. And I think it's important because if we can show different perspectives of the same painting, I think that will inspire others to try it as well because there are so many unique points of view when we're sharing our paintings. So thank you again, everyone. I really enjoyed the session painting with you and I hope to see you again in September. Have an awesome rest of the day.